is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this sliced effect using GIMP. So I'll go ahead and get started here in GIMP. For this tutorial I'm going to use this specific image. It's a model image. I will have a, uh, a link to it in the description of the video if you'd like to follow along with um, exactly what I'm doing here on my screen. So the first thing we want to do when we open this image up here with GIMP is just right click on the layer and make sure we have an alpha channel. So go ahead and click on add alpha channel. If that's grayed out and you can't click it, that means you already have one, you're good to go. And what we want to do next is get rid of the background. So I'm going to grab the, uh, the fuzzy select tool up here and just going to go ahead and click on the background area. It's going to create a selection around it and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. Or if you're using a Mac, you can go to edit, clear. And then I'm just going to click on this little white area here between the neck and the finger and just press delete on that to get rid of that as well. And then we'll go to select none. So what I want to do next is I want to place a circle over uh, a portion of the head where I'd like to uh, up, where, where I'd like for the uh, slice to happen. So let me zoom in on this area right here just by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel a couple of times. Uh, if you'd like to move the page around, you can just press down the mouse wheel and move the mouse like that. And I'm going to grab these circles and ellipses tool up here, the ellipse tool. And I'm just going to create an ellipse going over the top of the head right here or over the forehead right here. And I want to pay attention to where I have the borders placed. So so I want to zoom in on this area right here and just make sure I have it placed near the edge. You want it almost exactly to the pixel. You don't want it too long. You don't want it sticking out too much, but then again, you don't want it in too much either. You want to have it like right on the edge like that, as close as you can get it. And to, si to change the size of these circles, you'll notice these little tabs on the sides and in the corners that they highlight. The borders highlight yellow and you can move them up and down like that. So, whoops, let me recreate that. I'm going to put that circle right about here. I'll put this up here like that. Um, maybe I'll leave that right there. And that looks pretty good right there. So what I want to do next is create a new layer. So I'm going to click on this down here that says uh, create a new layer and add it to the image. Click on that. And I want to name this one circle. Go ahead and press enter. And I want to fill this in with a color. So I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to fill it in with a gradient. So I'm going to change my foreground and background colors to the gradient I'd like to use. So I'll change the foreground to a shade of red like that. Then I'll change the background to a darker shade of red like that. And then I'm going to grab the gradient tool. And over here from this menu, we want to choose foreground to background like that. And for the shape, we want linear. And once we've done that, you just click and drag to create the gradient like that. You can hold control so it locks it onto the horizontal axis like that. And then just go ahead and press enter on the keyboard and it's gonna add a gradient like that. And what I wanna do next is I wanna enlarge the selection of this ellipse here so that it covers the, the top half of the head. So I'm gonna grab the uh, rectangle select tool and I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and just click and drag to create a rectangle going over the top of the, uh, the woman's head here and I'm going to make sure that the bottom border of this rectangle sits halfway through the uh, the ellipse like that and again it's important you're holding shift while you're doing this otherwise it's going to create just the rectangle it's not going to add the rectangle to the ellipse selection like you see here on my screen and once we've done that you can just press enter on the keyboard and we have our selection set what I want to do now is take a copy of this, take this uh, model image down here and make a copy of that. So go ahead and highlight that layer. Uh, click this button that says create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. And then just click and drag this, uh, this uh, copy up here. And what I want to do now is click on the original copy and then just press delete on the keyboard. And you're not going to see anything happen on the screen, but it's going to delete the top portion of the head from that layer. Then we'll click on our new layer up here and go to select invert and then press delete on the keyboard again. And again, you're not gonna see anything happen, but what happened uh, now is that the head is now sliced into two different layers. So I'm gonna go to select none. I'm gonna grab the move tool and I'm just gonna take the top portion of the head right here. I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and then just slide it to the right like this or you can slide it to the left like that. And if you notice, it's created the illusion as if the top of the head's been sliced off like that. Um, one final thing that I'd like to add here is just a little bit of a shadow, a little bit of a drop shadow right here just to help sell the effect a little more. If you notice here, I did this in the thumbnail design. I add a little bit of a shadow in there. 
So to do that, um, let me click on the circle layer and I'm going to add a new layer in there. Create new layer, click that button. I'm going to name this one shadow. And I want to set my foreground color back to black. And I'm going to grab the paths tool, which is over here. And I'm going to start a point right here. I'm going to create another point going out here like that. And then another point going around the outside and through the head right here. And then to connect it back to the starting point, I'm going to hold control and click on the starting point like that. And then I'll press enter on the keyboard to create a selection from it. And what I'll do now is I'll go to edit, fill with foreground color. And now we can go to select none. Uh, let me just grab the move tool to get rid of those uh, pads. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to blur this. So I'm going to go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to take the size and just slide that up until it's a good, until it's blurred a good amount. You can adjust it however you see fit. I think right there, right about there looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and click OK. And one final step with the uh, the shadow would be to get rid of the area that's bleeding outside of the uh, the model image here. We want to cut that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this image down here, this bottom layer, right click that and go to alpha to selection. Now click on the shadow layer and go to selection. I mean select invert and then press delete on the keyboard and then go to select none. And as you can see, we've finished. We've created our sliced effect using GIMP. So that's how you can go about doing that. If you'd like to add another layer to it, like I did here, you just pretty much repeat those steps. I would recommend merging these three layers first. You could right click this and go to, um, we're looking for merge down, wherever that is. There it is, merge down. Right click that, do it again, merge down. So that each of these are on separate layers. And now you could just go ahead and apply that same effect, that same effect to this layer right here where you'd put another circle, fill it in and whatnot. So that's how you can go about doing that with GIMP. If you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.